Okay, we're in Mesechet Chlaim, Perik Aleph, Mishnah Aleph. I'm doing this in the airport. So I apologize if there's a lot of noise and it's very difficult to hear. I'm doing my best here. I'm traveling, so we'll do the best we can. Okay, in order to understand what is Chlaim, essentially Chlaim are mixtures prohibited by the Torah. The Torah prohibits different kinds of mixtures in different kinds of situations, and we're going to see which ones they are. Uh, we're going to get into in future Mishnayot. You're going to see that the future Mishnayot, the first three Mishnayot are short. So I'm going to talk about, uh, hopefully, the Ta'amea Mitzvah a little bit more in the future and some of the some of the practical ramifications. But let's stick with the Mishnah. We're going to talk about, just as an introduction, what are Kilayim according to the Torah. So there are two main parts, par- places, where this idea of Kilayim appears in the Torah. The, the first is in Vayikra Perek Yutet Pasuk Kavtet. Et chukotai tishmuru, tishmuru. Again, now the Torah calls it a chok. So just normally our understanding of a chok is this is the way it is. So you should guard my chukim. Behemtecha lo tarbiya kilayim. You're not allowed to tarbiya. You can't sexually entice or make your tarbiya means to animal husband your animals as kilayim. Sarcha lo tizra kilayim. Do not plant your field kilayim. Ubeged kilayim shatnez lo ya'ale alecha. And a cloth, a garment of kilayim shatnez. Kilayim is a forbidden mixture. Shatnez, we don't know what it is, we'll see in a bit. Lo yalecha, you not, may, may you not play, you may not place it upon you. Okay, so we have three kinds we saw here. Behemtecha, climb of animals. Sadcha, climb of the field. Ubeget. Then, later on in Dvarim, we have another pasuk. Says the Torah, in Dvarim Chapet, Perek Ptukim Tet Ad Yud Aleph. Chapter 22, verses 9 to 11. Lo tizra karmecha climb. Pen tikdash hamelea hazera asher tizra utvuat hakaren. You may not tizra so karmecha is your vineyard kilayim pen tikdash lest it become tikdash means in this context uh, prohibited hamalea hazer asher tizra utvuata kerem lest the produce of that kerem of that vineyard become totally kadosh kadosh in this context does not mean holy it means uh, it means forbidden then lo tacharosh b'shor b'chamor yashdechtav you may not plow with a shore with a, an ox and a donkey together. You may not wear shatnez. And now we know what shatnez is. The shatnez that we saw over here, now we know shatnez is semer upishtim yachdav. So the Kahati explains in his Akdama, in his introduction, that there are five types of claim as we just saw. Kla Izraim, okay, the claim of seeds. And that is, to plant two types of seeds together. And the prohibition is planting. But if it's already planted, as we're going to see, there's no prohibition of benefiting, of hana'a, or achila. So if somebody plants kla'im together, you're allowed to benefit from the produce. You're not allowed to do it, but if somebody did it, you're allowed to benefit. That has huge ramifications for us today. The second kind of kla'i zra'im is also isur harkava, l'harkiv. Harkava is, harkava is to graft from one branch to another in trees, ve'itzim. So you're not allowed to graft. to have an apple tree and I want to put a lemon tree on it. Can't do that. Next one is called kla'i hakerem. This is from the pasuk that we saw, Lo Tizra Karmacha. But remember, there's an additional pasuk of Pen Tigdash Amalaya Asher Tizra. So therefore, there's in Klai Hakerem, in a vineyard, there's a prohibition of Zriya, of planting, but also in Isur Hana'a, Pen Tigdash. And because of that Isur Hana'a, Chazal were, the Chazal were extremely makfin, and we're going to see they had a Gzeira, they also decreed that if you add Klai Hakerem, they used to send out Gabaim in order to uproot it, to get rid of it. Third one we saw is Klai Behima, you can't intermingle, you can't uh, an animal husband, two species together. We'll talk about it. Then, lo tacharos shor b'chamor, shor b'chamor yachtav. This is any type of work. The Gadi explains it means any type of working animals together. Okay? So you can't work two types of different animals together for threshing, for plowing, doesn't matter. And finally, shatnez, this is familiar to most of us, shatnez is a form of kilain. It's a form of prohibited mixtures. So just as a, as a, as a sort of, uh, as a sort of, uh, uh, you know, synopsis or summary, let me do this little chart. Okay, the kind of Isr, if we have Kla'e Zra'im, Kla'e Hakerem, what the Isr is, so for Kla'e Zra'im, here we go, for Zra'im, the prohibition is Riyas, is, is planting, okay, and where is it? It's only in Eretz Yisrael, Be'aretz. In Chus Aretz, it's permitted even the Rabbanan, as we're going to see. Kla'e Hakerem, Zri'a, Hana'a, and Achila, and it's we're going to see Bein Ba'aretz, Bein Bechutz La'aretz. We're going to see Bein Ba'aretz, Bein Bechutz La'aretz, but Chutz La'aretz is the Rabbanan. Kla'e Ha'ilanot is learned out, the Harkava Ha'ilanot is from Harba'a Behemot. So therefore, it's, this is planting, and this is Bein Ba'aretz, Bein Bechutz La'aretz. 
And clay har ba'ah is not zriya, it's not planting, it's har, it's, uh, har ba'ah, it's animal husbandry, and it's whether you're in Israel or in Chutzar. So with this, we can go to the first Mishnah in Klaim. It's a little bit of an extended introduction, but it's kind of important to set the, set the, to understand terms. Okay. Now, in order to understand that what we're talking about extremely well, there is the book. The, the book on Klaim is the book of, of Dr. Felix on Zra'im, of Yehuda Felix on Zra'im and Harkava. I actually took this book out from the library, from the Arot library, but I couldn't bring it with me on the trip. But it turns out that I have online access to the Otsar HaChachma. And as you'll soon see, we're not going to go through it extensively. We're not going to go through it totally, but we're going to, we're going to see different pictures, different, different uh, examples from the, from the Mishnah itself. Okay, I'm going to actually continue the introduction at the beginning of Mishnah Bet, because I want to actually get to the Mishnah itself. Says the Mishnah, the Mishnah assumes you know Klaim are prohibited. It assumes you know all this, but you just want to know which types of, of plants are prohibited together and which are not. Says the Mishnah, Chitim v'hazunim enam klaim zebazeh. Chitim are wheat. I have, we actually have, I, I'm going to use the English, because we're going to see in the first two chapters, the Mishnah is going to give you a number of different examples of which we really don't know what they are. Okay, we're going to, the, 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 Dr. Felix is going to explain it quite well, but they're not really relevant to us. So look at the Mishnah. Wheat and Darnell. Okay, everybody know what Darnell is? Darnell, so the Zunim, we're going to see, the Bartinera says, Okay, Zuan in the Enam Klaim. So the Kahati actually says that Zunim are a kind of black seeds that grew among the wheat. Okay, and they're not Ra'idam Achal Adam, they're not edible, so normally they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be Klaim. But there is some, sometimes people use them, they feed them for their birds. But anyway, the Zunim were a kind of species that grew between the wheat. So therefore, they're not Kalaim Zebazel. The Mishnah says we don't consider them Kalaim. So wheat and Darnell. Seorim Bishibol Shuel. If you have barley, shibola shuel, and is barley and spelt, okay? Barley and oats, sorry, shibola shuel is oats. Or, kusmin vishifon. I don't know all these words by heart, it's better to get them right. Spelt and rye. Or, pol v'hasapir. Pol are beans. Sapir is another kind of beans. Sapir is a, a type of, Kati says, a min pool. Thank you very much. We'll see in a second exactly. Felix is, has beautiful, beautiful diagrams. Porkdan v'hatofach. Pork dan va tofach, beans or chickpeas, he says, or bitter peas and tofach. So even he didn't know what tofach was. Look at number five. An aquatic plant like the colocasia. Okay? Let's go back to our, back to our Mishnah. Okay? U pul halavan ve hashu'it enam kula im zebaza. So these are all different kinds of species that would grow together with one another and they're not kula im. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna skip. Next, the next time we learn this Mishnah, I'm gonna go through this Yushalmi. Because we have to know what is Kalayim and what's not. How do we know the different, what's considered a different species or not? It's very important to see this first Yerushalmi in order to get a sense. But uh, you see the Felix, he says, okay, this is Chitim. He gets pictures for each one. It's a long book, but we're, not, we're going to just look at the pictures. This is Chitim, and this is Zunim. It is Lolium Tementuculum, I guess. Okay? So you can see it has a reed, and this one has a longer reed. In the, in the Felix books, the one next to the other, but I can't show you the both books. What can you do? The next picture we saw was Siorim Bishibolet Shu'al, which we said was barley and oats. So let's go back to Felix, Siorim, barley, Cordium Setivim, okay, that's the way it looks. I don't know if you do barley farmers, Shibolet Shu'al, Cordium Discutum, Shibolet Shu'al, oats. That's how they grow. I'm not an oat farmer, but they, they look kind of similar. If that makes you happy, that's great. The next one we're going to see is Kusmin Vishifon, which we said are spelt and rye. So let's go back. We're going to go down. You can see he has, oh, here we go. Okay. Evina, some, some, we call this Shibola Shuel today. So what, it's interesting, when you look at, at the Felix, you'll see in their day, Shibola Shuel was a different type of barley. But today, what we call Shibola Shuel is totally, totally different. Which is a problem. It's a problem in general for these Mishnah, because in general, we have Different names for all the produce that we saw, that we, that we call today. What we call, we're going to see an avatiach, a melon, is very different than what they have today. Okay, kusmin, tri trictum dikonum. And what do we say? Kusmin and chiffon. Chiffon was rye. So let's see what chiffon looks like. Chiffon. So those are not klein, one, one, one to the other. Let's move this over so you can see. Kusmin looks like this. And chiffon. Those are also not klein, one to the other. Back to the Mishnah. Pol v'has sapir. Pol and sapir, they're kind of beans. Beans and chickpeas. Is it really beans and chickpeas? Let's see. Okay. Pol. Pol hagina, he says, which is vikia faba, a kind of 
kind of bean if they had. Okay? Sapir. Vicia narbonensis. I don't know. Looks kind of the same to me. Back to the Mishnah. Porkdan vahatofach. Porkdan vahatofach. Pishona. No, that's, let's go from porkdan and tofach. Here's porkdan. Tofach hachimza. Lathribis sisera. Okay, and tofach. Tofach is tofach tarbuti. I don't, honestly, I have no idea why Chazal considered these not to be kilaim zebazer, but they consider them close enough, I guess, in the fruit and the bean in order for them not to be kilaim. What do we have to? Pol halavan vehashu'it, the last, the last two. Pol halavan, dolikos lablab. Okay, it has, these are, you know, obviously a growing bean pod. And shu'it, shu'it, it is a vigna nilokita. It's obviously some kind of bean pod also that grows. This most of it looks like the green beans that grew in our garden at home. All of these, the Chazal say, are not considered kalayim zebizet. They're not kalayim from one to the other. But you can't mix them, obviously. All of them are different. Okay, this is the end of this long Mishnah, Mishnah Aleph. We'll get the, uh, the beginning, the Akdama, of what kalayim are, what kalayim are prohibited one to the other. We're going to see in the coming Mishnah out just lists of different types of things that are not kalayim. And in the next Mishnah, we're going to discuss how did the Torah know, how did Chazal derive what, what is kalayim vis-a-vis species and what's not vis-a-vis things in the same species. Uh, all right, if you have any comments or questions, as always, please feel free to contact me at rspolter at gmail.com. If you're learning this for the first time, welcome to our Mishnah Yomit Club. I want to dedicate this to the memory of my father, Rav Simcha Ben Yitzchak Kalman. Have a great day.